Hello, everyone. It is time for another Contentful live stream, and it is not Tuesday like it usually is. Today is Thursday, I think. Today it's Thursday, and what we're going to do today is that we're going to play around with Next.js. And with me here is James. James, how are you doing? Hello. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm excited for, for the little thing that, we, that, we're, <laughs> that we're trying to do here, actually. So, so who are you, James? Uh, so my name is James Kalmus. Um, I'm a developer at Digital Theatre, and we're um, basically a platform that gives teachers, students, um, and uh, consumers kind of access to theatre productions, interviews, behind the scenes things. Um, so yeah, we've been working on Next uh, JS and Contentful for quite a while, and uh, basically we we were at the the Next uh, conference the other week, and we got excited about a, a little pull request we could do. So that's why we're here. <laughs> Sweet. So let's figure that out. Before we uh, just dive right in, I have to do a little bit of housekeeping. So um, if you're new to Contentful or you're a Contentful developer and you want to learn more about um, these live streams, blog posts, and all these kind of things that we do, you can go to our developer portal, which you will find at contentful.com slash developers. If you have any questions or you want to share anything with the world that you did with Contentful or want to get in touch with other community members, we have a Slack. You can sign up uh, under contentful.com slash Slack. If you're new to the GraphQL world, Contentful's GraphQL API is now free for a few months. Um, so you can check out ctfl.io slash learn GraphQL. And if you then, the cool thing, if you build something with our GraphQL API, you can let me and our team know. And then you can get some swag um, if you build something cool. So that's always something nice, some stickers and maybe some socks. And next week, we're actually doing our first Contentful community hangout, it will be November 18. It will be in three time zones, one day. So it will be uh, Europe, US East, and US West. Um, we're going to have some talks. We're going to maybe play a game. We heard that Among Us is very popular right now, and we will have some community contributions. And you can find these under contentful.com slash events. And with this, it's already time to get into stormy waters. What do you think? <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> cool. Um, so for the people that are not familiar with Next.js, what is Next.js, James? So Next, uh, well, yeah, as you can see, uh, it's a React framework. Um, basically, it is, um, it's a really nice way of packaging uh, your app. So you kind of, instead of coding things just through uh, components, you've basically got the ability to kind of um, write pages, uh, and so you format your work in in a series of pages, which is um, in then basically how your website and your URL is structured. Um, it also comes with a load of things like static site generation um, right. and a whole load of other things, including image optimization, uh, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Sweet. I'm only playing around a little bit uh, with Next.js. Have, have you tried their their hybrid mode with this stale while revalidate re headers? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, use SWR. Yeah, I've used the um, the hook. Uh, uh, so I've got like a, a library where you can you can sort of cache different API calls and and things like that. That's pretty cool as well. Yeah, I think that's cool. So, and we were at the conference, and at the conference at Next.js Conf, they basically announced this image component, and we both had a brief look at it, and it seemed to be a pretty nice thing. Um, mm -hmm. um, so, as we both had a look, what does this thing actually do? Can we both had a source code? Can we can maybe sum up what we're trying to achieve here right now? Sure, yeah. So um, I think one of the things that has been quite difficult um, over the, the sort of past couple of years is actually making optimized uh, or lazy loading images work properly um, with, uh, with, um, yeah, with Next.js. And essentially what they've done, what, uh, what Next have done is they've created a component which allows you to plug in your, uh, your CMS essentially and um, put in your URL tell the browser what width and what height you want your particular image, and then it actually optimizes that image. So it does things like um, making sure that it's using the, the right format or yeah, um, or making sure it's the right size. Um, and essentially, what we want to do is we want to um, add support for Contentful, because it's got support for a few others, but obviously, uh, you know, we want to improve. 
That, that could right. be. <laughs> right. So uh, here's already the source code for that. So uh, I will walk you all through this in just a moment. But basically, what this image component does, it supports some image providers and it maps then certain properties of the React component to query parameters to serve the right image for the depending use case. And when we have a look at these loaders, Contentful is currently not in there. And this is exactly what we're trying to achieve here. So to make that work, I already did a little bit of pre-work so that we don't uh, spend 10 minutes looking at NPM install or setting things up. So what, if, in case you want to get started with Contentful and Next.js, there is this startup project available under Next.js slash examples CMS Contentful. Um, it comes with everything bootstrapping. You can uh, import a content model. You can set things up. Um, so it should be ready to go in just a few minutes. And I have that running here already. So you see here the result of this starter template, and it is already connected to uh, Contentful. So was there Jameson already? Yeah. So so you see here that this is already connected. <laughs> nice. I should have deleted. I should have deleted that. <laughs> so when you update the, the content in Contentful, you can publish that, and everything is connected. So when I now do here a refresh, it uses Next.js and uh, Contentful as a CMS. And now when we go into this project, which you see here on the left side, we have to work in two projects. It will become a little bit tricky at times, but we're, we're going to make that. So the way that it usually works is that you have Next.js as your dependency, and you just have Next here in your package, Jason. And what I did previously was, or just before beforehand, was that I changed that to use a local um, clone of the whole Next.js project. And all of this is described in um, this README from Next.js. And if you're curious on how to develop your own Next.js components, it's basically here. So basically, this is what I did. I added the local path to my local clone of Next.js as a monorepo. So there's a lot of code in there. Mm -hmm. And then I removed the um, installation coming from NPM. And then um, I connected these two things. So what we see here right now is basically here we have the Next.js code on the right side. Is that big enough for you, James? Yeah, yeah, it definitely. <laughs> so we have, uh, we have the image component already open here on the um, right side. And we have here a component that is basically powering this little thing here. So when we go in here and we do just something like, here we go now, something like this. It should, no, it will not, oh, it does. There so go. here we go. There we go. So now we're entering the territory where we will figure things out on the fly. What do you think? I can't wait. <laughs> so how should we start? I think we should initially look at this thing here. huh? Yeah. So let's see. Mm. So the thing is, that we probably should import this body first, and then we should see what happens. What do you think? OK, sounds good. So what we could do here is that I'm just going to copy this whole thing, and I bring it into our component that we have on the left side. And we see here that this is there. And here we go that we should use it like this. So let's drop everything here. And let's, what do we see here? Wait a second. We see that there is an image component, and it has a source URL. And we could potentially do this, and then we should be good to go. So I'm changing the alt text, and I'm changing the URL. And then we could see if it's screaming at us and if everything is wrong now. Cool. OK. Ready to go? <laughs> cool. So I have everything running here. So you see, I flipped that around. So on the right on the right side now, you see the Next.js app running. So let's do a refresh and let's see what happens. Boom! Wow. That that's that's fairly red. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is very red. Uh, so. So yeah, so the first thing you have to do is you have to set up your next config uh, file, which is next.config.js. 
to um, to support the new image component. Um, uh, okay. Let's see, so we have here we're here in the uh, next JS thing, and so, we don't have a config file. Wow, exciting. Okay, so <laughs> I think we just we can just create a, a file, um, and uh, yeah, so that's the default one that's going to be used. Next config JS. Yep. Cool. And here it already does, it looks like it does already some optimizations and stuff, huh? Yeah, so these are part of the uh, the parameters that I think are passed through. Um, I guess, yeah, and actually the thing that we're trying to do basically is, is on line seven where we've got default as the loader we want to, uh, by the end of this hour, get to a point where we've got Contentful in there and it's uh, it's making a difference. Right. So let me, now that we have a new config file, we probably have to, oh, that is nice. Or it figured that I changed the configuration. Cool. That is pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, so let's do that again. So the thing in, with this setup, because I use a local dependency, I also have to run these things, and then I'm calling yarn dev to just kick everything off again. Oh, my cursor is going fancy. <laughs> let's see. Perfect cool. for live streaming. Yeah, perfect. So let's go back. We now have a new config, and we can go back and see what happens. So let's do something else. Doing the refresh. One. So we mm -hmm. may find you've still got the same uh, yeah. issue. And to fix that, or at least what, yeah, one of the things we can do is add that to the domains uh, array. That is a pretty nice error message, I have to say, huh? They're quite good with their error messages. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice. So here, mm -hmm. let's give that another try. On next image, hostname images CTF is not configured in your Next.js config. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we did that, huh? Yeah. Uh, I Hmm. Ah, okay. This this will be uh, maybe you have to refresh your uh, server again, restart your server, because you made a change to the next config. Let's see what happens. If not, we can already go exactly here because this is in the next JS source code, and then we could already debug it there. That's true. All right. So let's see what's happening. Okay. Maybe we should take the documentation too. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was. I, I've, I've got it on a screen uh, just in case, but I did think that was. Look, was pretty much what we have now. Okay, let's see. Whoa! Ah. Looks like we're back to normal. There you go. Okay. Okay, and it looks like that when we look at the configuration, let's see what we got. We have got 500, 500. And when we now change this to 1,000, that it should probably. Sweet. Nice. That, that's not too bad. Okay, so so it, it works. <laughs> did something happen? What do we get here now? So we pump in this image thing, and what's the result of this? Oh, wow. So it looks like that it's already doing a bunch of things here. So it's creating a sort of a source set as part of Ooh. the image. Is Next.js resizing too? I thought they're only doing this with the with the API, but do they do this in a serverless function now? Good question. This is, does that work when I do this? Oh, oh. <laughs> it's not allowed. Cool, but I think we can figure out how that actually works by just changing it to, um, to Contentful. What do you think? Yeah, OK. 
Cool. <laughs> so a lot of people are already pointing out that we should have restarted earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Cool. Oh yeah, so the no, whole... I can see. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I just realized where the comments are. Cool. So when we now go to the documentation, what we should do probably is that there is something like in this is what we're what we're aiming for here, right? Yes. What do you think? Should we just bring in Contentful and then we make our way through all the exceptions that we will see? Uh, if you're happy with the the wall of red. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's give that a try. So I'm I'm going back to the configuration. Yeah, and that's a good point, actually, uh, Chris. Uh, ah. just said we should specify 600. So if we tried 640. Does that work now? This is beautiful. Wow, it does. Oh, my God. So when we now go with... Okay, now I see the excitement of this. This is why I was so keen to, to work on this. <laughs> Holy... I thought that they're only mapping properties to uh, query parameters of images APIs, but it looks like that they are having also some things in place in case you don't have an images API, huh? Yeah, that's clever. So this has potentially be to be a function then, doesn't it? Because I don't think that they're resizing it all the time in a, in a build or something. Fancy. No, so I guess, yeah, this is part of the... Um default loader wow all right so then then i'm ready for the for the wall of red <laughs> should we do it let's do it so the idea here is for the people that are maybe new for to contentful is that contentful actually also provides an images api so when you have assets oops that's not the right ring when you have assets stored in contentful you can append uh, query parameters and then you can resource it um, also with something like this you can append a w or an h and then, um, then you can um, retrieve the image without having it in, in your own infrastructure. Um, Peter says that Next uses Sharp to resize. Interesting. Hmm. I I definitely thought it's not that powerful. So let's let's go in here and let's try Contentful. And what we now have to do is we have to um, stop this whole thing. And now we unfortunately always have to call yarn install, which copies everything from the local thing into the uh, into the project itself. And then we're going to call yarn dev. And then we see already the, the wall of red. <laughs> so yeah, you can see sharp being installed there. Yeah. Ah, thanks, Peter. Good hint here. Cool. So when we now go back in here, and we go here, and it's probably broken again. See? And I think potentially what, what we should do is we should make our way through the source code first. What do you think? Sure. So let's see how the loader is doing. Yeah. But now we, aha. Uh -huh. I think something is completely broken now, but let's have a look at the component itself. So this is the image component that is included in Next.js itself. So you'll find it in the mono repository um, with packages next client. And this doesn't look too bad here. Are you good in TypeScript, James? I'm so so. Uh, yeah, yeah, we use TypeScript digital data. Okay. <laughs> so let, let, let's see how this whole thing works. Um, so I would start with just adding a new line and we do it like this, huh? Sure. And now it's already complaining. Let's see. So this should probably be contentful loader. Yeah, for when we create it. And then where's this buddy coming from? So yeah, okay. below that all of them are yeah functions that are declared. Right, and I think that what we should we so gets a source and width. Should we maybe just start by uh, returning just the source URL to see if it's working? Sure, sounds good. Full loader, and grab the source, and then we have loader props. I have no idea what's in there. Um, and 
this and it returns a string, which is then the URL of the actual image. And then we could simply do something like burn source, huh? So I think we need the, the root as What's well. What's the root doing? Uh, so I think, so it's normalized. Basically, it seems that what they do is they get the domain, um, which is the mm. root part, and then they append basically the sort of image part of it. Normalized source seems to be it's a string split, and it takes everything after the first um, forward slash. Got it. So you say that we should do something like exactly what they have there, right? Something like <laughs> yeah. this, and then this. Yeah, and then that should actually, uh, I think, maybe if we wrap normalize, uh, wrap that with normalized source as well. The, uh, what, the source. Does, what does that do? So that just, it basically takes everything. Uh, I think what it, essentially what it's doing is it gives you like um, the sort of second half of the string. Um, if you only put in a URL, which starts with a slash, then mm. it prepends the root as well. And then you've got an, an absolute URL. Ah, uh, got it, got it. Cool. So with this, I'm just logging it because I'm not really sure. So when we have, there is no root key in here, right? But I think that is, that's the domain, I think, that we've put in. So images, right? Got it. Got it. No, what well, we will find out. I'm logging it out now. So what we unfortunately have to do now is we have to um, install it again because this VS Code instance is the local Next.js repo. And the other one is the um, Next.js startup project for Contentful. And we already talked uh, before we kicked off the stream that either this is going terribly bad or we will be super, super quick. So let's see, let's see how this goes. <laughs> so what we have now is we have the process running. And with this, we build everything. Drum roll. Drum roll. Oh, look at this. This is root. Uh, right, OK. Potentially, we don't need that, right? Because you see here now, we have um, this prepended. I don't think that we need that, because we're dealing with absolute URLs, all right? Right, right. OK, so let's drop that one. And then we could just go with normalized source, maybe, because the rest actually Looks already OK, Usha. Decoding yeah. async. This is super hipster front end stuff here. <laughs> oh my god. Is that a thing? I thought that is not cross power supported. So I think what that does is it makes it faster somehow. Wow. Huh. Wow, oh, that's pretty good. I thought uh, async is the only thing that we can do now, like this uh, loading async attribute that we have. But cool. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change all my sites tomorrow because I learned something <laughs> here right now. Oh, boy. Yeah, me too. I'm just going to write that down. <laughs> exactly. Everything so, is decoding async. All right. So we can. what we can do is that we can drop the logging now. And the assumption is that when we now do the next run, that it should potentially be already not optimized, but we should at least see something. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the next people develop in the same flow here. There's probably a nicer way than, than doing that. Do you think they've got a faster way of doing it? Yeah, some symlink magic or something. Yeah. I, would, I would accept. Yeah. Expect. Okay. Let's go. Is it running? Oh. It's a tense moment. Well, that's always so much pressure here, you know? <laughs> Compiled and built. Nice. Nice. Cool. So what we have now is basically we have a wrapped image that is all coming from here. So it is, nope, from here. 
So this is now mapped to the image component. I think we could now, does it support classes? Did you try it? Should we, can we map that? Let's, let's try it. So we, okay, so now we should have at least some classes. And now it's kind of time to, did it do that? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it did, huh? Shadow small. Yeah, I think uh, it yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, that worked. Cool. So, so basically, uh, Next.js images component is mapping this to an optimized um, component that uses source set because not enough people use source set to optimize their images properly. And it is um, doing decoding async, which I've learned about today. <laughs> and now it's basically time to make it uh, do actually um, proper resizing. So let's have a look. How, how should we approach that? So I think um, there's actually quite a nice, uh, like sort of, if you look at the imaging, uh, imgix one uh, above, there's quite a nice way of doing it. They've got these params as um, a set of sort of a, you know, array, string array items. Um, mm. And then you can push the width basically uh, as part of that. You know, if we want to do more things like the quality, because obviously Contentful's got the uh, the quality uh, parameter as well, then we could potentially do that as well. So should we do maybe, so we, the error approach is a nice one, right? So we could define mm -hmm. Const params first, and then we just check um, params. We can definitely go with width, right? So we can mm -hmm. definitely part this part because we have that in Contentful too. Yeah. Something like this, and then we could do um, maybe we join it together if the, when there is more coming later. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. So we could do params join. Something like that, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do now is we have to restart it again. And potentially, we would already load different image sizes. So the source set attribute then would have different image URLs for different sizes. Because currently, we see that it's always the same image. It's mm -hmm. always 2,000 pixels. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> we're defeating the purpose here a little bit. <laughs> All right, so it's doing its thing again. And I still didn't completely understand how we define the width and height in this, if this should be layout dependent or image dependent, or I, I think we have to dive into that a little bit. Right, you mean the actual component itself? Yeah, uh, for example, what to put in here, right? Because I'm not really sure what we right. should do there. Okay. Um, but. But let's see. Well, look at this. So here we see that there is some source set done, and we see that it should. Oh, no, it's not working. 1080, 1080, 1080. <laughs> so it's doing the same one for every. Uh... Is the parameter correct? Specify width and height. Should be, yeah, W. Huh. Uh, Should we just copy one URL and see what's going on? So let's grab this one. How big is that? Do you see that here? So it's saying that's 2,000. I think if you, uh, you clicked on that again and then it uh, I think we're right here. OK. Is it maybe a Chrome display that it's just displaying what is currently loaded? Um, yeah, look, look at this. It always has W1080. It's not really visible, but it's the display in Chrome DevTools is not right. Right, OK, OK. Right, see the, the URL is correct. but, it, but the, Yeah, that is changing, yeah. The display is not correct. To go, P Peter thinks it's working. <laughs> and Chris. Cool. So with this, um, 
What, what, what do we put here then in width and height? Is that how, how would we do that? Uh, should we should we grab? Hmm. Should we lock if we have it available here? So yeah, I think. Uh, so you mean it, it's something that's passed through? Yeah, maybe we have width and height from the image, and then we could just pass it down. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh shit. Um. Let's destructure that here so that we can have a look. But actually, but, I think this this comes from from a GraphQL query somewhere. Right. Well, I was going to say, I, I guess actually, the, so the width and the height on that component are what you want to present it as. So it's about hmm. the size that you want on the page rather than uh, what you want kind of from the, the source image. But when I now lay out, for example, an image, I don't necessarily know the height all the time, right? Yeah, that's true. Should we should we check if there's something fluent or something? Yeah, I'm just trying to have a look. Um, image sizes, domains, we got this, we got this. Caching, no idea. So there's <laughs> layout. <laughs> so there's a so you can specify width and height, or you can go for layout. Um, so uh, you can have layout equals fixed, uh, intrinsic responsive, or fill. Hmm. Um, but that looks like that's the next JS config, isn't it? Or is that on the image component? So it's on the image component. You'd rather than specifying width and height, you'd specify layout equals uh, fill, for instance. And I guess it then well, <laughs> let's try that by, but potentially it could actually then try and uh, load the kind of right size, basically. Um, so like this. Out. Yeah, exactly. And then basically it's kind of automatically sizing on the page and it loads the correct woo. <laughs> <laughs> close enough, close enough. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly what I intended to happen. Um, there is also responsive. Responsive may be closer to what we're looking for. Let's um, see. So responsive. Image with source. All right, so then you have to specify a width and height. Interesting. I so think we have... should adjust. I think we should adjust the GraphQL query and then maybe see what happens. Okay. <laughs> um, let's, let's go with your suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where somewhere in here there is something like um, API. Here we go. And now we would have to figure out a GraphQL query because somewhere in here should be the image. Mm. So you've got yeah, yeah image up there, yeah. Mm, how do we do that now the best way? Do you use our GraphQL API? Uh, yes, yeah, we do actually, um, but we don't. We we use it to get the yeah the image. I mean, we don't really specify any sizes when we're when we're pulling it. Mm, but we get, for example, when we um, let me show you something cool here first. Um, so what you can do now? So what you usually do is you go to graphql.contentful.com and you use Graphical right to write a GraphQL query with Contentful. Um, now for a week or something, we have GraphQL Playground as an app available. Cool. So let me just install that for a moment, and then we can uh, write the GraphQL query. This now needs an API key, so let me just grab that quickly. Um, and we can uh, get the dimensions from the Contentful GraphQL API actually back, so that we could define that in the component. Oh, uh, nice. OK. So let's install that. And now we have GraphQL Playground available here. So let's figure that out. Um, so we're dealing with posts. And we have a cover image. Is that what we're dealing with here? Wait. Yeah, the cover image. Yeah. 
cover image. Here we go. We're here. We I think they just use that to uh, calculate the aspect ratio. I don't think that they do more more with these kind of things. Right. Okay. And then I suppose if you've got the layout as responsive, it'll scale. Yeah, that makes sense. So let's there. drop this one in here. And I'm just without testing it. I'm now just assuming that this works. I don't, this is this is piped through five components or something, but I just assume that this will work. Good luck. Uh, All right, height and width, width. All right, let's see. Where are we here? What? Uh, you've uh, you've changed it to responsive, right? Yep. Hmm. Should we just drop that for now? I think maybe it's time for another restart. <laughs> Image with source. Blah 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 blah. Must use width and height properties. I think we changed the GraphQL query. I think it maybe it could be really time for a restart. Okay. But we also see that there is some stuff going on here. Oh, that's our error. Okay. So let's have a look. We made good progress already. I think so. You think you think we can do this? I think we I think we open the pull request in twenty minutes. <laughs> okay, deal. <laughs> That's the whatever, spirit. Whatever whatever state it's in, we open the pull request. <laughs> okay, that was was not it. Mm. Uh, probably this is this is probably not right. Maybe they're they're coming through as as uh, empty, and then that's why yeah. it's not picking anything up. I think it's uh, that's what we're dealing with here. We see that somewhere. I'm always yeah here here you go undefined right yeah. Uh, now we have to dive deeper. So yeah, if we go. So what are we doing? Uh, so we have here get all. So extract, post. Is that what's? Extract that that looks like a good. Yeah, this looks like fetch response. Hmm. So one of these. Uh, yeah, one of these functions is is pulling out uh, all of these items, and we're just not currently <laughs> getting the width or the height. Are we in the right thing here? So we slug title cover image. So you had you have width and height, didn't you? Um, and you're in the GraphQL playground. Yeah. So what we did here, let me just format that. So we're querying all posts going into the collection, and then we have cover image, which I really would assume is the same thing here. Yeah. Because we probably have also title here and we have slug here. So I think we are on the same level here. Yeah. And then we probably also have excerpt. Yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident that we're in the right spot here. So and with this, we get cover image, URL, width, and height. So I think this part is correct. Okay, so I think it, it's probably one of the extract functions then. We've got this um, kind of uh, uh, I would have thought that they would return. So we have, we're dealing with a single post. Hmm. Where's the single post? This one? No. So, um, Peter 
has asked are the image dimensions on the origin image what you really want to put into the component i think didn't you say that was about calculating the aspect ratio Th this is what i'm assuming i'm assuming that we're open for other for other ideas peter so what what should we do so this is how it works these days with the normal uh, HTML image component, right? When you just drop in width and height, it's usually also ignored, but the browsers these days use it to kind of calculate the aspect ratio so that images are not jumping anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so this is this is what I assumed is going on here. But um, should we should we dive deeper here into the GraphQL logic, or should we should we try to make that work without width and height? Uh, <laughs> good question. I mean, I suppose at the moment we know we know it's that all of those images are uh, two thousand by a thousand. Um, oh yeah, there you go. Ali uh, has just uh, confirmed what you said. It's about determining aspect ratio. Um, hmm. I would should we check? Should we check? Let's have a look what cover, cover image is used. Maybe there's something just not passing down. Sure. Oh, look at this. This looks pretty much <laughs> easy peasy. Seasoned professionals. <laughs> just poking around and always here control F, right? Always look through all of everything. So what we could do is cover image width and Image height. Looks good now. We'll nice. Now go. Please, please, please. No. Did I comment it out? No. Let's see. Still undefined. Still undefined. I think Lawrence uh, has probably got a good point. He says we can hard good code point. for that. Good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let, let, let's let's see where, where we're going with this. Okay. Thanks, Lawrence. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> let's not watch two people looking into. Yeah. Into... <laughs> yeah it's not as interesting as as we thought it was. <laughs> okay. So here we got this now. Um, so where where did we left off? Uh, we left here. And. We wanted to bring in. Hmm. So, uh, so one of the other things we wanted to do is we wanted to have a look at quality, which is obviously another of the contentful um, parameters that you can use on the API. We can go with this one, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's actually very similar to the MGX. And then we do quality, quality. Cool. And is that a parameter on the image component? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. So you can use quality equals, and then it's a, the, it, it, yeah, exactly 10. It's a percentage. So it's a number out of 100. Just like the contemporary one, actually. So let's see. We, we expect a very ugly image now, huh? I can't tell us that. Oh, uh, we have to, we have to, mm. we changed the source code of, of next. Oh, sure. So we, have, so we have to do that again. So let's see. But pretty much this is already it, isn't it? Other, other than getting that height and, uh, and width from yeah. the, yeah, for the example, yeah. Is there anything else in here that we should have a look at? So we are also very close to Cloudinary. Mm -hmm. But they also have. They, I have to admit, they made that very nicely, right? I mean, we could just go in there, or add a new loader, and that's pretty much it. I think the structure is beautiful. Yeah, it, yeah, it's really well done. Yeah, kudos to the team there. Well, it looks like we just. Uh, did you see that on stream? I think it worked. Oh, brilliant. Pretty, pretty nice. That looks very shitty. 
<laughs> Just as we intended. <laughs> there you go. Ugly, we saved uh, a lot of points on the wire here. Nice. <laughs> um, okay, I think the last point is that we really could have a look into uh, width and height, and then I think we're actually already done. What do you think? Cool. Sounds good. So I, so the whole thing is coming from here. So what we see here, let me just get rid of the of the hero post, and it accepts. It gets from the outside a cover image. And I would really just now do another. I'm a, I'm a strong console lock debugger, you know. I think uh, I think you have to be really, don't you? Um, it, it takes me always ten minutes, fifteen minutes before I enter the debugger because I feel like when you have complex uh, projects at Next or Gatsby or all these things in Chrome DevTools or something, become very slow when you start debugging them just because there's so much stuff going on. Yeah. So I would, yeah, I think that's true. Although actually, I think next, not to you know sound like I work for them or anything, but I think actually next uh, ten seems to be a bit faster on like yeah. the uh, on the debugger. But okay, let's see. Yeah, do you do probably way more next than I do? So, so but it doesn't look like my console log is coming out here. We only three see three times undefined. Huh. Shouldn't so that come someone, out? Oh. So I was just going to say, someone said, uh, Burnt Custard said uh, WebP as a question. And actually, this was something that we talked about before, wasn't it? Um, I think some of, the, some of the image APIs have the ability to kind of automatically detect uh, we figured probably through user agents um whether or not the browser supported the webp format or uh, or whatever um contentful you have the ability to request a webp image but you guys don't have that kind of automatic image um detection do you? unfortunately we don't yeah yeah we we discussed that really earlier it would be nice to have that but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like, I don't know. My log is not appearing. So should we make it from, from the outside, from the actual route to see what's going on? Sure, yeah. So we are currently here. <laughs> this is great, OK. <laughs> <laughs> and we're dealing with the post header. Should we just log out post here? Post should give us more. Yeah. Let's see. Here we go. OK. So we have cover image. We have height and width. So it is there. And then we go down into the post header, which gets cover image and image. Uh, oh, there's a, right. There's, there it is. No, there's another place. I changed the wrong thing. Mm. Okay. Cover image width and height. Cover image height. Let's see. So now we should get. That looks good here, huh? Isn't that okay. the right one? There's yeah. the right one. So yeah. now we need to go back into the cover image, make sure. We're using those parameters now. All right. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> Time for another restart. Right. <laughs> when in doubt. When in doubt. <laughs> Kill it. <laughs> Start again. All right, let's see. On, compiled. Is yeah. it going to work? No. Hmm. We still see probably undefined. Und no. OK, this was, oh, I removed the log. Ah, oh, stay with me. <laughs> Width, height. 
you, you thought it had been solved, didn't you? Yeah, I was very optimistic here. So let's see. Here we there's one image that doesn't have width and height. Hmm. Hmm. Where's that coming from? So yeah, it starts off having it with night and then one of them loads doesn't. No, that's not it. Let me just have a look where cover image is used. This one, I guess, is one too. Post preview. Yeah. So yeah, one of the things we're doing, Lawrence just said, what's the error? So the error is just saying that uh, basically width and height are undefined. So there's somewhere on our example uh, repo that doesn't have them defined. You may have just solved that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, something doesn't look right here. I suspect that's because so we're, we're at the moment we're only uh, handling. Oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Stefan. I'm a professional developer. You know. <laughs> oh my god, uh, uh, that happens so often. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's give that another try. So but that now looks good. Should we now? How, how would you check check that if that is actually working well? So, should we maybe check the network panel to see how much data we actually load? Because I expect that now to run automatically, automatic magically, and save some data. Cool. Okay. So here we have the image. This one, which currently is. Right. We should maybe increase the quality again. <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting actually. The the default on this, if you don't set quality, is seventy five. So oh, if you uh, yeah, if you're using this and you think you know, maybe it could look a little better, then you can just increase the quality. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so when we now we're dealing here with one hundred. 12k images and i assume when i just make that smaller now and we refresh that we get less well i have to say that is pretty cool so that is probably fairly no no it's not i know it's the same <laughs> what hmm Oh man, I wanted to already celebrate. That is unfortunate here now. Oh, but look at this, it's only setting source set, right? right? Shouldn't it set sizes too? To, yeah, I guess. So, to, uh, to sort of be able to huh. yeah, move in. Hmm. Is there something like sizes? So you've got image sizes there, which I think we'd already defined before, right? I don't have it defined in the config. Oh, I do. I do. Hmm. Yeah, so that sizes property. Uh, you can also um sorry i'm just re re reading the comments just to see if uh, anyone's commented yeah you can also specify sizes i think on the component itself um oh, is that not documented i'm looking here sizes right now and it doesn't look like it's documented on the Image component. So, so we... yeah, I can see it on the API reference. <laughs> um, so that's what Ali's just put up. So uh, sizes defines what proportion of the screen you expect the image to take up. Recommended as it helps serve the correct size image to each device. This is basically when we have a look at this whole thing. 
this is like the image component i assume right so this is then yes. 100, 100 width minus i don't know let's just go with 90 90 width does that make sense sure yeah so let's see let's have another look at the network panel So we're loading stuff. So it is now 95. And when we make that smaller, ready for fingers crossed? <laughs> Got my fingers crossed. What did I just say, 95? 95. Well, 83? 83. Want to give that another try? <laughs> <laughs> make it even smaller. Still 83. Mm. But we're expecting now that, let's have a look what comes out of, oh yeah, but that looks already pretty decent here, huh? Look at this. Oh yeah. So that's a lot more detailed than it was. Yeah, I think our job is done here. So this is source set. How's it usually in images? Responsive images source sets. Yeah, this is what it's usually right. Source set. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think we're I think we're actually done. If there is now a sizes property, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I think we're done. Cool. Oh, that's brilliant. I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's very totally. cool. Yeah. So are you ready for the most important thing today? <laughs> so you see here, probably Jeez. don't see that on stream. I'm already in Next.js and I have a branch open already, which is add contentful image component. Oh, that is so cool, man. I love, I love that. Let's see if they have a commit convention or something. Doesn't look like it, huh? Nah. No, I can't see one. Oh, let's see if we if, if we play with it. Oh, we're okay. We passed pre-commit checks. Nice. Add contentful image loader. Let's do this. Let's push that. I hope I forked it. Hopefully, I didn't just clone it. <laughs> oh my god! Please don't say that I'm rejected now. So nervous. Uh, uh, maybe I didn't fork. Shit. Oh. Okay. Oh wow. That took ages. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> I think this is so cool. Oh my god. Uh, I will just uh, make a proper pull request to not annoy the people from Next.js. So let's just create a draft pull request. Um, but we made it, James. That's brilliant. That's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is super, super nice. <laughs> cool. Are there any any things uh, that we should address in the in the comments before we wrap up? Um, let's see. Um, I think we probably should play around a little bit more with this implementation, and we should probably I, I for, for at least for myself, I should understand all these intrinsic and add stuff attributes. But I would assume that it now just works. Yeah, and also the the, the other point that Peter made about um, the site's images coming from. Contempt for, I guess, if you use that, I think we we probably need to play around a little bit to see um, how the loader interacts with the image component. If you're, yeah, you are using an image from a different domain or something like that. Yeah, yeah, fair point. Um, but yeah, at the end of the at the end of the day, what we did is that uh, we forked uh, Next.js and we went into the implementation of the image component, which was released with Next.js 
and version 10. And now potentially what is possible is that you can go into your next, not now, but if in case people accept our pull request. <laughs> in the future. In the future, maybe someday. What you can now do is hypothetically that you could define the contentful loader for your images. And we implemented that in Next.js itself. And basically, what the only thing that we did was, where's our loader? We, <laughs> we wrote a, how many lines is that? Eight lines? Yeah. It's Eight beautiful. lines. And, but, but we also had something added here. Oh, but we see that uh -oh. something is not right. Oh, oh. that's true. Uh, one final thing. So, so I, yeah. If you hover over the uh, the the error, what's it saying? Oh man, I'm already lost with TypeScript here. Uh, uh, argument of type. Oops, wait. There are some typing somewhere, and we have to. Yeah, add I think that. Over. Yeah, I think that's that's what it is. Yeah. Oh, in fact, it's just load a key. 20, line twenty-one. So where is that coming from? Line, oh, here line we go. Twenty-one. Yep. That should solve it. Nice. Job done. Nice. So with this, um, thank you very much, James. That was a lot of fun. Um, no worries. Yeah, thanks for having me. Want to do that again someday? Oh, definitely. Yeah, just let me know when uh, when we've got some more uh, contentful Next.js stuff to, to do. I'm more than happy to help Cool, up. yeah. When you would like to do it again, um, I'm... I would love to have you again. So if you have ideas or if anybody, anyone who was watching has any questions or things that we should do, um, I think this was pretty, pretty cool here already. So I'm going to wrap up with some housekeeping again. Do you need to add the string contentful? I think we already did. Yeah. And let's hope, let me just, um, where is the pull request? This is currently failing, but for the people that want to follow along and maybe subscribe to this image because you desperately need this in your contentful Next.js app. This is the pull request. And uh, I'm going to, yeah, let's see uh, how a pull request in Next.js works and what we have to do to actually land that. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm going to, I will not forget that. And hopefully we can land it in Next 10.0.1, maybe. I don't know. Or, oh, it shouldn't or be. A, it, 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 it shouldn't be a patch release. It should be 10.1. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It'll be a major change. <laughs> yeah, let's go with, well, <laughs> let's just propose we go for 11 now. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> so, and uh, with this, uh, so if you have questions or want to learn more about what uh, the DevRel team or Contentful developers do, you can go to contentful.com slash developers. We are always hanging out in Slack a lot. Um, so if you want to um, hang out with the community, you can go to contentful.com slash Slack. Um, if you're new to the world of GraphQL, we touched that just a little bit, but you've seen that you can query the data that you want. You can go to ctfl.io slash learn GraphQL. If you build something with GraphQL, you can go to ctfl.io slash GraphQL swag, and maybe we sent you some stickers and some socks. And yeah, next week we have a community hangout, three time zones, one day. We're going to have some, um, some talks, and we might play Among Us if someone wants to play with me. <laughs> um, so and that that's it. Thank you so much, James, for joining. I think that was a lot of fun. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks.